Hi y'all, let's talk a little bit about statues and flags on the left. Oh my! So a couple of years ago, you'll probably recall the Confederate flag issue and about how people wanted it taken down from a state house and maybe put in a museum if anywhere and now there's obviously the uh, rash of destruction of various kinds of uh, statues relating to Confederate war people, uh, people from Confederate times and how these are being vandalized and torn down, graffitied and all, all manner of things. Everyone should know by now my position on the Confederate flag with respect to uh, its being on the State House. I think it's a bad idea to go taking these things down simply because some people are offended by a given flag because you're setting a precedent that today this flag, what is going to be next? And people will want to argue sometimes that there is a slippery slope fallacy there. There's no slippery slope fallacy. It's simply predicting future actions based off of uh, previous behavior of politically motivated people. If you give them what they want today, uh, they are unlikely to be happy with that because they don't lay out their full set of goals. And so you see now that uh, the same language that was talked about with respect to the Confederate flag, it's racism and and oppression and colonialism and imperial, you know, all the things that are associated with that are now being thrown onto the American flag. And people are taking a knee uh, for various reasons related to racism. So it, it's just predictive behavior. Humans are, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Humans are a little bit predictable. If they're politically motivated to find racism wherever they can possibly manage to spot it, then you have to believe they're going to continue to do that after you give them the next capitulation. And I say the next capitulation because the next capitulation is never the last capitulation. They always want something else. But anyway, if you, uh, if you give in to that kind of, oh, I'm offended by history, then there's really no stopping point, and there's no particular reason to believe them when they say that they're only worried about uh, these displays on public property. In Stafford County, Virginia right now, there is, uh, uh, well, it's been an ongoing issue with some guy on his own private property, on his own private flagpole, uh, it lets people fly their own private Confederate flag, which is visible from a public interstate. And so people are trying to get the city to pass an ordinance to force this man to not permit the Confederate flag to be flown on his own private property. And as I already mentioned, the, the things that are being uh, hurled at the American flag now. There is no stopping point once you start giving in to these people. They cannot be made happy. You will never satisfy them, even if you give them everything they want today. Because that just simply tells them that their strategy is effective, their tactics work, they can get their way, and you have to believe that they are going to continue wanting to get their way, just like a petulant child who's never heard the word no. They will turn out to be that spo the stereotypically spoiled valley girl who throws a hissy fit when she wanted a red car, but only gets a, blue, uh, a new blue car. They are the political equivalent of that spoiled brat. And so at some point, you just have to say no. And the city attorney has said, no, we can't do this. There is another added benefit to saying no, other than the fact that it lets them know they're not going to get, them way, get their way by these various tactics that they use. It forces them to engage in discourse on the same level playing field as other people in the conversation. And without, as I mentioned in my last video, without uh, the, there are different equilibria state that you could have. One of which is someone uses this dirty tactic here and other people are trying to talk up here and they go, well, we have to come down to their level and have that conversation. Once you start saying no to these types of people, they are forced, if they want to be in the conversation, to elevate their conversation to bring it up to this more civilized level. So in Stafford County, Virginia, after years of uh, pressuring the government to pass an ordinance, to pa essentially to pass a law to make it illegal to fly for this man, which I guess this would almost be like a bill of attainder in, in a weird way because they're going to single him out by name for this. Anyway, whatever. To pass a law to make it unlawful for this one particular man in all of the world to fly one particular Confederate flag on his own property, or more particularly to let someone else fly their Confederate flag on his property that he's leased to them for the purpose of flying that flag because it's visible from a public space. So when uh, they said no a couple of years ago, it just continued to be brought up, continued to be brought up, and continued to be brought up. And now again, the city attorney is saying, I'm giving the same advice to the city that I gave to them the last time. 
and have been giving to them consistently, it is not lawful for you to do this. You have no power whatever to tell some private person what he can or cannot uh, say on his own private property, what he can't, what flags he can and cannot fly on his own private property. And this put the, the censorship people, the same types of people who want to tear down our history because it offends people, uh, to force us to perpetually be victims of our own past by not remembering our own past. These, that's one of the, I don't know if that's the particular goal, but that is certainly going to be the consequence if the maximum that those who forget history are condemned to repeat it is, has any wisdom in it. And things that are going on right now seem to support the argument that those who don't remember what has happened in the past are going to be repeating the problems of the past, which is why we're having people arguing for se segregation. Anyway, whatever. Bit of a side issue. I'll get back on topic. So, finally, someone there decided, wait a minute, I live in the United States of America. I can't, uh, I don't live in a fascist state, even though I want it to be one, but the, the evil fascists aren't being the fascists that I want them to be by passing a law to make it illegal for a guy to fly his flag. And now I have only one uh, legal recourse left. I will use my freedom of speech in opposition to this guy's freedom of speech. So this woman is uh, now learning that, one, it's expensive to get your own flagpole and a large flag. Apparently she needs $25,000 to do this. But she wants to fly a, on, her own, on her own property a equally large Black Lives Matter flag. And I say, more power to you. I would have said this is a quintessentially American act if you had tried that first rather than trying to use the government to pass an unconstitutional law to make it illegal for a person to engage in expressive conduct that offends you or people you know. This is how the, the open marketplace of ideas is supposed to work, minus the attempt to get the government to censor someone. You see something that bothers you or disturbs people you know and you're, you know, you're second-hand pissed off about it. And uh, <clears throat> the person who is engaging in the activity that pisses you off is simply expressing an opinion or you know, engaging in expressive conduct that you don't like. What you do is use the same exact right that person has against him. You engage in your speech. Of course, one of the problems with this, though, is that the guy who's flying the Confederate flag is happy for her to fly her Black Lives Matter flag. He wants her to do it. It's your property. Express your view. Tell your truth, sister. Whatever it is that moves you to speak in public, more power to you. Speak your peace. I applaud you for it. And that is probably one of the reasons that most pisses off these people is that they can't get anybody's goat by simply engaging in free speech on a level playing field. Because it doesn't piss people off when, when uh, <clears throat> they're simply speaking their mind. What pisses people off, the people who, whom they don't like, what pisses them off is when they try to use the organ of the state to punish people for not agreeing with them. And when they can't do that, all they're left with doing is engaging in free speech, which doesn't bother the other side. And there is nothing, revenge is best served cold. And the best thing that you can do when someone is engaging in speech that you don't like is not be offended by that speech. Or if you are offended by that speech, don't show them that you are offended by that speech. They are essentially IRL trolls. If you don't give them the emotional porn from you that they seek, they will find other things to do with their lives. This woman is going to fly, if she, gets, if she raises the funds, her Black Lives Matter flag. And when she finds out that zero people on the right, zero of the people who you know, are like uh, you know, Southern Pride, uh, give a flying whoop de doo about her flag, she's going to find that it's a very empty gesture because it's not expressing, it's not getting the result that she wanted. Now, the people who fly the Confederate flag, they say it's not hate, it's about culture. Uh, I don't know these people. For all I know, what they're saying is true. For all I know, they're racists. Uh, for all I know, that they really do mean it is just about remembering our history with the side, with the side effect, the side benefit, the the gin and the compare that I get to piss off a bunch of politically active people who are failing to be able to oppress me. And if, if that is the only reason they're flying it, what is just the uh, knock-on effect, if that's really the true purpose they're flying it, just to piss these people off, I say more power to you because it's working tremendously well. I mean, this woman is so exercised, so energized, so pissed off that she is going to do the American thing and engage in speech that other people can see and hear and judge. 
and I see absolutely nothing whatever wrong with that. I wish her the best. Uh, I hope she gets every penny she needs to build that flagpole and to build this huge 30 by 30 foot Black Lives Matter flag, and I hope she flies it uh, just as proudly as she can and that it is seen by everyone who drives by uh, because they're going to be like, yeah, you got a flag. Whoop-de-doo. Go you. Work it, sister. All right. <laughs> Have a great day.